panel. So the panel is the growing use of sports, of AI in sports. And I believe they're going to talk about wearables, about how athletes and, and spectators and, and viewers at home maybe uh, can benefit by, uh, by using AI. Good luck, Jonathan. Alan. Okay. I should actually announce who you are. Jonathan Gorfung from Deloitte, the main manager of sports tech, uh, energy resources, and IoT. Jens Hillman from Head Scout of Lead Sports Accelerator. Daniel Schichtman, co-founder and CEO of WSC Sports Technologies. And Gabi Kaminski, CEO and co-founder of Odobu. All right. Thank you. So good afternoon. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the sports tech domain manager for Deloitte's Innovation Tech Terminal. And through our work with uh, Deloitte's large multinational clients, as well as with uh, very promising startups here in Israel, uh, we have witnessed uh, the, both the opportunities and the challenges of innovating uh, in the sports industry, and specifically with AI-powered technologies, and we hope to highlight uh, some of these opportunities and challenges today. Uh, we have some great panelists uh, that could give us insight into uh, the use of AI in smart stadiums, in media, in fan engagement, uh, in uh, uh, training professional and recreational athletes. And so without further ado, I will ask our great panelists to uh, introduce themselves and their companies. Great panelists. Uh, hi, I'm Daniel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of WSC Sports. Uh, basically, we develop a platform that can automatically and in real time generate personalized sports videos for every fan on every platform. Uh, we work with uh, leagues and broadcasters such as the NBA, the NFL, March Madness, Cricket Australia, etc. And basically the way it works is that we uh, ingest live sports videos into our system. And then the system does a combination of video analysis, audio analysis, and stats analysis to understand what happens in each and every second of the competition. So every goal, every touch on every pitch is automatically detected in real time, uh, including the best uh, start and end point, how interesting the event is. And then after we understand what happens for the entire match or for the entire season, our system knows what's interesting and automatically create highlights on players, teams, games, and everything you can imagine. Uh, as I've said, we're working with a big organization and today, 50% uh, of NBA content you're watching worldwide is being automatically generated by our platform. Same goes for NFL uh, and the others. Hi, my name is Gabi. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Udobu. Uh, we're solving the problem of empty seats in the stadium in live events. Uh, it's a major problem for the industry. Uh, a few thousands empty seats per game for the top, top clubs in European soccer, for example leaving tens of, uh, tens of millions of dollars on the table every year. Uh, we do that by understanding and identifying uh, who are the fans who are not going to attend even though they already have a ticket so the clubs can approach them and ask for those tickets back so those seats are actually filled. And more importantly, understand who are the fans are, who are going to be interested in the next game or next event given its characteristics and features. Um, and, and that's the way that's the way we help solve this problem. Working also with, with very big clubs. The clubs are our clients. We're not working with consumers. Um, that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? No. Uh, yeah. Hi. My name is Jens. I recently joined Lead Sports Accelerator in Berlin. I bring an academic background in mathematics and tech, and uh, work experience in performance analysis and coaching in high performance environments. And we are uh, scouting our second batch. For the accelerator program, we, last year we had two companies from Israel and two AI companies, so we got a little uh, uh, taste. And um, yeah, we're happy to be here. If any of you are the founder of a sports startup or knows anyone, be sure to reach out. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's uh, actually start with Jens. Uh, Jens, maybe you can tell us what is your projection about where will we see uh, more implementation of AI powered technologies? Is it AI assistant coaches? AI, sports reporters? So right now it's still early, so there's still quite a bit of experimentation going on. There's a startup that's doing well in, in basketball analytics called Second Spectrum. They've found some good uh, uh, mar uh, product market fit. 
David, uh, sorry, Daniel from uh, WSC must be doing something quite right which, uh, from what I hear. And uh, well, the two startups we had were in um, an ice hockey training robot and a automatic scoring system for tennis. In the more general sense, in coaching and training is where I see the first, you know, where, where, I, where I think is a great opportunity and then anything that touches on the greater overall health uh, space uh, where they, the sports use can be extended to the health use or you can start with the health and then extend to sports. That's where I see uh, things develop first. Excellent, thanks. Uh, let's talk about AI and sports media a little bit and that question will be to Daniel. So Daniel, your AI-based technology uh, you know, transformed the way that uh, uh, sports content owners can engage their fans, can target different markets. How far do you see this uh, personalization process go uh, and whether you think it will go to uh, live broadcasting as well, whether it will impact live broadcasting as well as uh, uh, you know, highlight reels and uh, past data and past co content? Yeah, so I think there's no doubt that uh, in, in the near future, and not just in sports, in everything, the experience is going towards personalization. Everything has to be personalized. You have Facebook, Twitter, Amazon gathering huge amounts of data, and their aim is to provide, provide the best experience and content to each and every user. And then they know how to make money out of it, if it's ads, if it's uh, affiliation, if it's transactions. And I think one of the best ways to do it is just understanding who the user is. Uh, so basically what we're looking at, if we're looking at the, f the future, is how we can take our tech and create a highlight reel which is one-to-one -one for every fan according to what they consume on every platform they're on, if it's fantasy sports, if it's betting, if it's just watching highlights. Uh, and I think it, that's the future. You're going to go into your self-driving car, you're going to sit there, it's going to be a 14 minutes ride, and then you're going to get pro programming for exactly 14 minutes according to what you like. So. There's no doubt the future is going there, not just in sports, in, in every media aspect there is. And how much do you think will be pre-programmed or pre-configured, pre and how much will be you know, purely AI-based? No, I think a lot of it can be purely, when you say AI, obviously it's, it's a big word, but once you have recommendation engines and you understand what each user knows, it doesn't really matter uh, how you call it, but the system would know what they can create on demand according to your reactions, or your behavior and everything you're doing and actually go and generate that content on the fly for you right away to have uh, engagement. Thanks. Uh, another aspect of the sports industry, uh, which is, uh, we think, an amazing platform for the use of AI is smart stadiums. Uh, and uh, Gabi has uh, quite a lot of experience in that. Uh, Gabi, can you maybe describe the vision of smart stadiums, how it's gonna look like, what's it gonna be, how is it maybe in the world today in the larger stadiums not, not as much as in, in Israel, I guess. Yeah, um, so first of all, smart stadiums, uh, they have two aspects. Uh, one would be the operation, it's, it's a smart building, a building with very unique characteristics because you have a lot of people, masses coming into the building at once. They wanna be seated very quickly in their place and then they all leave at the same time and spend, they spend not a lot of time in the building itself. Uh, so the natural suspects for you know AI implementation in smart buildings are around access control, around security, around predictive maintenance of different systems that these buildings operate. That's one aspect of smart stadiums. Uh, and the other one is related to fan engagement, basically, and everything around the experience of the fan in the venue. Uh, and, and there we see uh, many different things happening at the same time because there, are, there is this convergence between the experience of watching in the stadium and watching at home. And these boundaries are disappearing slowly because everybody, you know, all the media organizations are trying to recreate the stadium experience at home with VR and, and, and stuff like that. Whereas in the stadium, they're trying to create the, uh, the comfort of watching uh, the game from home. So access to even the, the toilets, uh, where is the shortest queue now, etc., uh, Or having the food delivered to my seat instead of queuing uh, for that. So uh, I believe that in, in the sense of trying to deliver a better experience for the fans, we're going to see a lot more around personalization. Uh, that's where the market is going to. Uh, but there are still a lot of challenges around putting in place all the systems that enable the connectivity, uh, the, the apps, all the applications of, of, of these services. Uh, bear in mind, in a way that does not interfere with the live experience of watching a game 
which is ultimately what the people are in the stadium for. They don't want to be distracted all the time with offerings, with looking at the secondary screen. They want their eyes on the pitch and being part of this experience. It's a social experience, and it's something that needs to be taken care, uh, taken care of with, with a lot of care. Thanks. Yeah, so the guys mentioned examples and talked about you know, the opportunities in this market, but uh, as we know, other than opportunities, there are quite a few challenges, and, and we think that the sports industry has some unique challenges that other industries might not have, and maybe we can use uh, the little time we have left uh, to touch on this a little bit. Uh, so maybe we'll start again with Jens. Um, well, Jens, other than apparel, the total addressable market for sports is sometimes smaller than in other industries. We see many investors concerned to invest in sports tech, um, maybe because there's not a lot of history of exits. Uh, maybe you can describe from an investor's perspective and from an accelerator perspective how you see this market in terms of investments uh, developing towards the future. Yeah, so the challenges are pretty obvious. Sports has a long history that did not include too much tech. And getting in the door, you'll need help or you come from the sports industry. And not running out of money while trying to find your first three, four, five, six, seven customers is a hard challenge. And uh, the way a AI startups or, or sports tech startups can do it, they need to be 10 times, be uh, 10 times faster or 10 times cheaper. And AI might be that promise to, to, uh, to be so obviously better than whatever is out there. But you still have to face that challenge of not building something that's just nice to have, that everybody thinks is cool, but nobody pays for. It's very hard to find out, so what's their real pain point, something that they really need to solve, that they're gonna spend money on. And since it's so early, and, and, and sports is still like growing into this sort of like dinosaur industry that's been around, long, uh, around for a long while, uh, there's a hard challenge there. On the other hand, AI is such a strong like, revolution in technology, 10, 15 years down the road, it's gonna be everywhere. And whoever figures out how it gets there is the one that's gonna win and is gonna make the money and build the next cool company. Thanks. Uh, Gabi, maybe even continuing exactly that topic, so you predicted very accurately fan attendance in stadiums of some of the greatest clubs in the world. Uh, but you've seen some, uh, you know, problems in how they turn these insights into actions. Maybe you can talk about this a little bit and explain whether you see a change in their approach and the development in their approach. Yeah, um, so definitely I want to build on, on Jan's comments. Uh, the sports industry uh, doesn't have innovation in its core. It's not the core business around innovation. They don't have to innovate in order to win more trophies. Uh, yes, there is an, an understanding that in order to win uh, the pockets of the fans, there needs to be a lot more innovation, uh, but it's something rather new in the industry. And I believe that the key challenge, especially framing this within the AI context, uh, is that in order to be able to execute well uh, with an AI-related startup in this industry, uh, there is this natural, natural evolution of what happened in other industries before AI was introduced to. So first you need to have data available and everything has to be digital because it's been a pen and paper industry up until like 10 years ago. Tickets were not sold online for the biggest clubs in the world. So you have very recent data. It's not a lot of data. Think about the most successful teams in the world. They have like 25 games per season. It's not the volume of data that Amazon has on the transactions of their, of their customers. So that's an, another huge challenge. And then the second stage is let's structure this data. Let's unify the different silos this data uh, are, are stored at. So you know, we have data in ticketing, in CRM, in access control, in other systems, in the website, mobile apps. Uh, so the second stage is let's put everything together. And only then let's start thinking about what can we do with all this data and what better service we can provide to our fans through it. Uh, I believe that the sports industry in general, and there are a few early adopters and innovators in this space as well, but most of the industry, with anything related to the business side of managing a sports club, is now currently going through a transition from stage one to stage two. They all put some systems in place and they are starting to accumulate more and more data. 
uh, and now they're actually looking at you know 360 CRM and data warehouses and data pools and etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and and now when this transition is is complete or is about to be complete this is exactly the stage where promising AI solutions that can really leverage this data into meaningful outcomes for the clubs, as Jens was saying, uh, this is the right time for opportunity there. Thanks. I think that, uh, Sorry, that, that that we see, I think Gabi mentioned, in the last few years, we see a lot of uh, tech getting into sports and getting hyped. And, and according to my opinion, it happens because back then sports organization owners were like professional athletes just grew old and, and became the owners. But now we see in the last few years people coming from the high-tech industry, Silicon Valley executives, they had exited, they know how to manage companies, how to not leave money on the floor, how to use tech in a smarter way, uh, and how to leverage it. And they're investors and they're team owners and they do everything uh, together while doing it. And I think they, because they understand the power of technology, and obviously artificial intelligence is, is a part of the package, they understand how important it is to push it, implement it, and, and get outcomes, revenues, data, whatever, and that's why we see sports tech booming in the last three to four years like it was never before. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's very optimistic. Uh, maybe we can attack this question uh, from a different angle. So you, Daniel, well, Gabi talked about the clubs and the traditional sports organizations. You also work with another segment of the market, so, so media organizations, broadcasters, the leagues, which are not as traditional as the clubs sometimes. Maybe you can talk about their openness to innovation. How do you work with them? How did you sort of you know, overcome the barriers? Lots of luck. Uh, no, but you get into huge organizations, they have uh, their own workflows, the way they work, the way they do stuff. In, in our case, creating videos and content, they have a room full of 60, 70 people just working hard and creating content. Uh, and you need to come and tell them, listen, what you guys are doing is good, uh, but you can do much better, but you need to change mindset and, and change your entire workflow to make it better. So. Obviously, it's a big challenge to go into that organization, make them do that switch. Uh, you need to convince a lot of people while doing it. Um, so, but once you do it once or twice with the organization, you grow and it becomes easier because it becomes a standard. Uh, but with having that said, they do starting to have innovation labs and innovation people in the organization that their entire job is to go and bring startups and work with accelerators uh, because they understand that if they will not innovate, they will die. They will not be there. They will not be relevant because there are so many things to do today in the world. You can watch cats on Facebook and not watch sports. That's a competitor as well. Uh, so they're trying to push the boundaries as much as they can because it's their business in the end of the day. If they won't do it, they won't be relevant. Okay, guys, so we're uh, concluding this panel with very optimistic insights for uh, sports tech entrepreneurs. Uh, bon appetit, everyone, and uh, see you later. <laughs>